Okay, YouTube, just a quick video on uh, rebuilding my differential for the Red Cat Rampage MT. Um, okay, so in my last video, you saw that I cracked the um, diff case and I talked about the dog bone a little bit. Here you can see the crack in the diff case. Um, so I just got my new diff case today and we're gonna rebuild it real quick, put it back together. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, put this gear in the back of it. All right, step one is I need to put these two bearings back where they came from. So one goes in the inside, one goes in the outside. Okay, so there's the bearings on the inside and the outside. Just pressed them in with my fingers just as easy as they came out. And that's that. Next thing we do is just slide that gear in there. And on the other side, I'm going to just go ahead and put this cup on there and tighten up the set screw. Alright, so there's the drive cup and the set screw, and that set screw is just a 3mm uh, Allen screw, and there you go. Next thing we're going to do is just pop the differential into the case, and you can see in there, there's a little plastic pin on the one side of the case. That's to stop you from putting the differential together backwards. Alright, there's the differential inside half of the case. Spins nice. I'm gonna put the other side of the case on now. Alright, that's the other side of the case put on the differential. Now what I did when I was taking apart the first one is as I got everything apart, I put each screw back in its place. I did that so that I would remember how to put them back together because sometimes when you're doing this you might not have time to do the whole job at once like in my case I had the parts ordered and I had to wait but I wanted to take this out and get ready for it so as I took it apart I put all the screws back in lightly just so that I'd know where they go when I go to put it back together so I'm gonna just transfer these screws pretty much one at a time from the old case to the new case um, starting with the ones that go in there um, and don't hold on to anything and then I'll start moving on to the ones that actually uh, mount to the shock tower um, and the other parts like that. So now I have three screws in there one on the lower side on the right and one on the left and then one in the top here those are the only screws that really go in the case that don't hold on to anything else uh, so now I have to get the truck over here and we'll start putting that back together alright so here you see the front end of the truck pretty well torn apart um, so it's time to start putting things back together all right, so we've got this metal plate and plastic plate, the little blue metal one, and then the plastic plate. And those are what hold in the suspension arms when everything goes back together. And then this plastic piece up front has two of the pins that sort of give you a a set plate, a set place uh, to put this case onto the chassis so that it lines up and you can bolt it all down. Now you see the differential sitting in place and I have the front dog bone resting in there. Um, this is probably the trickiest part of the entire repair I would say. Uh, but basically what I'm going to do is take the suspension arms Put the pins back where they sit in that blue 
metal plate through that and then into the plastic metal plate and then into the same thing in the back so that they go through the blue plate and the plastic plate get them all situated properly clipped back together and then it's just a matter of lining everything up and putting the screws back together um, one thing I just do want to mention is this rear blue plate that holds those pins back when I took this all apart I found that this plate was slightly bent now if you're not made of money like me um, what I did is just take it and hammer it flat um, this thing is definitely going to be you know a little bit weaker it's been bent one time um, it's going to tend to you know get broken again but you know all I'm really doing with this truck is bashing it around if I was a professional racer if I was sponsored maybe I'd always put new parts but kind of the whole point of the videos that I'm going to be making is the fact that you you know just do the best you can buy new parts when you have to put things back together as you can and you can do it right from your coffee table just a normal person like me All right, so now I have the differential uh, connected up to the A-arms on both sides. And I still have to get it into the shock tower. I have the front drive shaft in place. And I did sneak one bolt into the chassis just so I could get it buttoned up enough have it sort of hold together so the dog bone didn't slip out or the front drive shaft and so like I said the next thing I'll do is get everything slid back into the shock tower where it fits and then I'll button it up into the chassis um, and then I do have this plate um, that goes back into the steering linkages Alright, so I decided to run the chassis bolts up in there first. We're talking about this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I do just want to let you know that when I ran them up in there, I put blue thread lock in there. Um, so you have blue and red lock tight, thread lock, compound, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think you can also get green not sure what they use that for but blue is sort of something you put in there that holds pretty good but you want to be able to someday remove it um, red is theoretically something that can't be removed so really don't want to go with red if you don't have to um, I go with blue um, but just use that as an extra safety precaution um, it's not something that I would you know rely on in, in place of checking the tightness of my bolts, but it is something that I do for a little bit of extra safety. All right, so as you can see, I got the four pin head screws back into the shock tower there. Um, I did take the shocks off of their top mount just so that I wasn't fighting the compression of the shocks to push the shock tower down into the diff case. Um, so if we look at the old broken diff case, we only have two screws left. Um, so that means we're getting pretty close to done. I just have those, which I'm gonna actually have to take the front bumper off um, because of the order in which I chose to put this back together. But that's cracked, so I'll take it off anyway, wash it up with some soap and water, and uh, I'm going to actually try to JB weld that. Um, bumpers aren't that expensive, um, and I'd probably even leave it cracked until it got beat up a little bit more. Um, the important parts are still together, um, you know, protecting it pretty well. But like I said, I'm going to try to JB weld that. Anyway getting close we have uh, those two screws in there and then we just have that top plate to put on over here and then we're all set all right so I got the last two bolts in there this one 
and this guy right here. As you can see, I got the bumper off. Chance to clean that up a little bit. And uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the shocks back on where they belong on the shock tower. All right, so there's one shock back on and the other one to go. And uh, like I said, just a reminder, you know, I took these off and I put the hardware back on it so I wouldn't lose it, even though eventually during this same job, I was gonna take it back off to reinstall the shock. You can do it, you don't have to. It's just my way of not losing hardware. All right, two shocks on there, nice and bouncy again. All we have left is that plate. We're all set. It's gonna go right there. All right, that top plate's in. We're all set. Uh, the bumper's still off, but it's uh, drying, uh, and I'm still gonna try to JB weld that. So. Uh, just throw that back on when it's done. Got one, two, three um, bolts, and those are actually connected um, through the chassis uh, with nuts. And then you have just these two front bolts right here on these structural posts, and bumpers back on. Uh, just a couple quick, quick things. Um, you know, the reason I didn't take this front bumper off in the beginning was that, you know, I was told by a local hobby guy um, who's been around for quite a while, um, always take off as little parts as possible to get to what you need. You know, I could have ripped this entire front um, apart, taken everything completely off and had way more work than I already did to begin with. Um, if I had had some rounded uh, head um, Allen tools, I probably still wouldn't have had to take the bumper off. Or if I'd put it back together in a different way, I could have gotten away with it. Um, but once I got it back the way I wanted and that was the most convenient, I realized that I'd have to take the bumper off um, just due to what I had there. Um, the other thing is... Uh, you'll notice that there's a Phillips head screw in here. Um, again, you know, one thing you're going to find with me is that I'm going to reuse things or just sort of um, patch things together as I can. You know, I'm not going to do a bad job, but when I find an exact fit at Home Depot for, you know, probably, you know, 50, 60 cents, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of it rather than special order, you know, a bolt. Especially. Um, just to get me running that day. It's not that I'm not going to go buy that part, right? But, you know, in order to just go ahead and get me running, I'll throw that screw in there while I'm waiting for my piece. Um, so, you know, with something like that, you just take your screw out, your bolt, take it to Home Depot, go to the machine screw section, um, and they have little fixtures that you can test out and find out what size you're looking for. And again, you'll have to settle for a Phillips head or a flat head nine times out of ten. Um, they do have some Allen key um, bolts, but they're usually the the not the not either the pan head style or or the button head style. They're sort of that. Um, I don't see one on here. Kind of like with this shock forget what you call them um, but it's like a socket screw or a socket cap um, they have those but they don't have the, the pan heads like this um, or or the button heads like that those they only have in Phillips head so again you know two things to really take away from this um, in my opinion are you know if you have some replacement part that you can get there cheaper you know it's not that you don't go and buy the actual part I mean that's up to you but at least to keep you running that day or while you're waiting for your parts on order 
go ahead and get the replacement that works just as well. The other thing is, like I said, with this front end, you know, um, as with any real repair, um, don't rip everything completely apart. I mean, go ahead, feel free to do that if that's what you want to do. But in terms of just, you know, go ahead and making the official, um, official, efficient repair, um, you know, just take apart as little as you need to, to get into where you need to go, take the part out, make the repair, put it back in there and get yourself back in business. All right, so that's about it for today. Um, you'll notice my engine's gone. I do have um, a new engine from O'Neill Brothers that I'm gonna put in there soon. Um, obviously, I have a little bit of cleanup to do here, and uh, I'm actually gonna flip that tank around to the other side so that the gas tank um, cap is on the other side there um, because I've seen a lot of people advising to do that because when they put the side pipe on, I got a Jet Pro side pipe, um, they said that gets a little hot and then the cap will melt and you certainly don't want any disasters. So that's it for me. Um, but the whole takeaway from this is uh, if I can repair a fifth scale monster truck on my coffee table, um, then I'm pretty sure I can repair just about anything on my coffee table. Um, and kind of my whole point in making these videos is to show you that you don't necessarily need, you know, sure you need a couple tools, you need some of the right things, but really, you know, two and a half, three, four, and five millimeter Allen wrenches, a um, couple sockets, some metric sockets, um, you know, random pair of pliers or a vice grip here or there, and you can pretty much make do if you don't have a workbench. Um, as long as you just have some space that you can work in, work on top of some at least paper towels, if not shop rags, and just do the best you can. And that's it. Alright, thanks guys.